Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Time Added On. Every episode, five topics, two minutes each, we give you everything that's new in Befica land and we give you our opinion. My name is Alfredo Fumasas. And I'm Cristiano Oliveira. So Cristiano, first topic, is this the best moment of the season? We've often talked about here, is the squad deep, approaching Europe, approaching Liga Nos, not playing the best football, but we've seen now a streak of good football by Lajes men. Yeah, and it's about damn time. I mean, we couldn't wait for this moment. We thought initially when the season first kicked off with the uh, with the commanding victories against uh, Sporting, you know, obviously the Crosstown rival 5-0, and then Pas Freire 5-0, Berlin's 2-0. We thought this would be a uh, uh, constant throughout the season, but unfortunately Benfica dipped in form for a little while. But now Bruno Laj finally seems to have guided his men in the right path. Uh, yeah, and I think that uh, repeating the 11, when up until this point he had a lot of rotation, he had a lot of, a lot of guys going in and out of the, the lineup, uh, some of them because of rotation, some of them because they were hurt, but it seems to have now have found a core or starting 11 that doesn't really, uh, he doesn't really mess with it. What's not broke, don't fix it. Big, huge part of it has been Gabriel and Tarabt in, in the middle. Yeah, you know that old saying, one man's trash is another man's treasure. And that's exactly what's happening. At the beginning of the season, we thought Florentino Luis was going to be such a huge, key, important part Jetson. of this team. Uh, Jetson is another one that would, we expected to play a lot more than he has. But, you know, last year towards the end of the season, he... Uh, you know, he wasn't the, the same key player that we all anticipated he would be because at the beginning of the season, under Bruno Lage, he was playing most of the time. Um, and then you look at another guy like Samaris, who was such a key player last year as well. So those two guys haven't been able to to, to, to keep up their same level of performances from last year. And credit to Tarapt and Gabriel, who you knew was going to be a starter. But those two guys have clicked. Those two guys understand one another. Those two guys have that next ability, passing ability, that next level. Uh, passing ability, I should say. So it's just been a beautiful thing to watch with those yeah. guys in the middle of the park. And also bringing out the best in, in players like Pizzi, who's having a career year, and Vinicius, really, that we expected him to be the third man on uh, on the pole, and he happens to be the one starter. Sabe o que é isso? É tempo da pro próximo. <laughs> Moving on to the next topic. As you can see, we just got an alarm. I didn't even know that this made noise. Uh, moving on to the next topic, uh, one of our five topics. Bruno Lage is renewed with Benfica until 2024, and he got a nice raise to go along with it. Your thoughts, my friend? Look, um, according to Luis Fivier, this had been in the works, and it was the contract was ready to sign, right? Uh, but you have to, to look at the timing of it. You got I don't think that Benfica ever had uh, an intent of parting ways with Bruno Lage. Uh, the timing of his signing, however, uh, you know, it, it, it matches up with Benfica's best moment and matches up with the team, uh, albeit not doing so well in the Champions League, making it into the Europa League and really finishing up the year in first place in the Liga Nosh. So the timing of it, that there's a bit of a timing of it. Uh, 2024, raised salary, which was, I think, was the most important thing. Yeah, but what took longer? Brulage's, uh, you know, signature renewal or... Andre Almeida's mustache to grow. What took? Because I mean, it <laughs> seemed like it took an eternity. It's neck to neck. For, I mean, it was close. It's very close because for, for for a minute now, it's been reported that Bruno Lage was gonna, you know, sign an extension with Benfica, and for one reason or another, Mendes wasn't in town, Aurelius wasn't in town, whatever the hell was going on. He had to go for his ultrasound with his wife for a little while. Exactly that, but that's a good reason to to, to delay things for a little while. You started, you know, there was a little skepticism as to whether it was going to go f uh, through with this and. No, good thing it has. This guy's brought stability to the club. What he did last year was absolutely phenomenal, uh, overturning in a seven-point deficit and taking the title away from our eternal rivals up north. So I, I think, you know, he, he deserves he deserves a nice raise. He deserves the stability. And yeah. I think this is only going to make him a better coach and it's going to make the team a better team. Yeah, absolutely. Look, his original contract was to 2023, but I think that he definitely deserved, uh, he deserved uh, a the raise. The nice raise. But... The, the one thing that we have uh, criticized Bruno Lage here, and this is our next topic, is Europa League, the Europa League approach, or, or actually European uh, uh, approach, uh, competitions approach. Um, last year, Europa League, he surprised us with the rotation when he went to Turkey with, with half the B team. We didn't get the beat, <laughs> but are you changing topics? Because that is our next topic, Europa that League. That is our next topic. Yeah, no, that's a good segue. So, <laughs> last year, he did surprise us with, with, with the lineup in Istanbul. The youngest, uh, what was it, like 22 or 23 average age. <laughs> and it was the first time Benfica ever won a game in Turkey. With that Absolutely. said, 
with that said uh, rotation. And now Benfica head in to the Europa League once again. Uh, obviously not having done enough to qualify and get out of the group in the Champions League. But at least they still uh, are going to play some European football come February. Yeah, come February, a double fixture, obviously, against Shakhtar Donetsk. Um, we hope that Brun Lage has learned the lesson in European competitions. And we don't know if it's the lesson that needed to be learned or the pressure from up top that needed to be applied, right? Because the last two games of the Champions League, playing with your strongest 11, produced the best results, albeit that Red Bull uh, game not having the final result that we needed. But nonetheless, that game against Zenit uh, did produce... Uh, a, a qualification for the Europa League. So how do we approach the Europa League now? And, and think about it. For those uh, of us that, that think that not getting out of that group is a disappointment, Benfica were really, you know, 10 minutes of extra time away from coming out of that group possibly in first place. If Benfica was able to some way, somehow, hold on to that result in Leipzig, talking about a totally different result, and now Benfica wouldn't be playing in the Europa League. But nonetheless, they are. They are, and they yeah. play a good team, a good quality team with the Portuguese coach at the helm. Uh, what's his name? Ramos? Luis Castro. It was close. Castro, Ramos, both Portuguese names. Uh, and, you know, a guy that knows Benfica well, a guy that knows Portuguese football well. Uh, ben, ben, Benfica. That, that, Is that the timer that, for the next topic? That's not the timer. That's not the timer. Uh, but the timer was about to come up. But, yeah, a club that, that I think poses... Uh, Poses some threats, has the ability to play some quality football. So, again, not the easiest of draws. Benfica very unlucky to uh, fall out of the Champions League and then draw a team that, like themselves, had just not advanced, um, you know, through the through the group stage in the Champions League. But team that is Champions League caliber, so very tough draw. But you know, again, playing at home in front of those beautiful fans in nice weather compared to the weather they're going to face up in Ukraine. Um, you know, things look 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 like you know they're going to head in the right way. Absolutely. Next topic? Next topic, because I stole your topic before, which you're supposed to come in with the Europa. I'll come in now. Nico Gaetan has been rumored to uh, possibly joining Benfica. He obviously made it known that he would like to join Benfica. He had a tremendous time at Benfica. And he's a Benfiquista. There's the time. And he's a Benfiquista um, at heart. But unfortunately, Bruno Lage knocked it down. Well, yeah. Yeah. Uh he, w he had an interview, obviously, and he said that he would love to uh, return back to uh, to Benfica. And, and this statement uh, started getting Benfica East is, uh, salivating for, Brun uh, for for Nico Gaetan, right? The, he's obviously has had the talent, uh, as Cristiano said in the Benfica podcast uh, that out, we Benfica recorded podcast. this week. Um, not at the legend status, but certainly a player that w that that's held in high regard in terms of uh, his his technique, his ability, uh, what he brought to the club, how he felt this club, the years that he, he played at this club. Certainly, uh, any Benfica fan would welcome him. Braj, uh, Brunlage was asked in a press conference. He did say that he doesn't fit the profile of the player that Benfica is looking for. Uh, now, Cristiano has has a view on it. I would have loved to have seen what values were going to be asked for, but I think that Benfica didn't even get that far in the conversation to see, okay, well, Nico, what will you take as far as uh, as compensation? But Cristiano has a I has think a it's a missed take. opportunity. It's a missed opportunity. You have, an, uh, you have an opportunity to bring in a, a guy that's won at the club. He's a winner. He's a very experienced player. He could obviously bring that experience into the locker room and, and help out the youngsters. Benfica want to have that Benfica DNA. This guy absolutely has it. He knows what it takes to win in the house. He understands what the pressures are of wearing a Benfica shirt and trust me ladies and gentlemen it is not light that shirt is a very heavy shirt to wear in Portuguese football and so uh, a guy that also adds quality to, 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 to the roster depth to the roster a guy that you know even in form can make the case that he could start at Benfica today so I don't understand the club's thinking uh, I, I think it's it's you know very upsetting that they're not even you know considering uh, the addition of Anico Gaetan who I think still has some football left in him uh, but unfortunately, they look at age uh, as as some type of dis, you know uh, disability, and and unfortunately, right now I don't think you know Nico is finished. I think he still has a couple good years ahead of him. So very very unfortunate um, yeah. that they're not really considering. Absolutely. Our last topic uh, for this uh, this episode is the Golden Boy Award, and I know it kind of falls a, a little bit outside the the Benfica spectrum, if you will, but obviously. Uh, 
João Félix won this year. And, and Cristiano, this is uh, an award that's been in effect now since 2003, so 17 years of existence. Uh, Benfica has already had two uh, players from their academy make it. The first one was obviously Renato Sanz. They match up Ajax with as the only two clubs to uh, multiple have winners. Uh, multiple winners. Uh, and I'm look, uh, the list is extensive here. Van der Vaart was the first winner, obviously, but uh, you got players yeah. players Rooney, like Rooney, Messi, Messi Fabregas, Aguero, Anderson, Pato, Balotelli, Godse, Isco, Pogba, Sterling, Martial. Only one, list. only Not but only list. one player out of this whole list, out of these 17 edition, has won the Golden Ball, which was Messi. Well, I mean, Messi and Ronaldo have had their name all over that ball over the last, yeah. uh, you know, 10, 12 years. So, but look, I, the Golden Ball is one thing. Winning this award is something that the club should be proud about. Not to the extent that they're out on, you know, promoting this and running in a parade down the the Canyon of Champions in Lisboa. But it's still an accomplishment. The one thing that does upset me about these types of awards is, obviously, João Felix won it as a Benfica, playing for Benfica. And now the hype will come out Atletico Madrid, and I think that's unfortunate. Maybe I'm being a little bit too picky, but I wish no, that Benfica would, you know, again, it, it's... a representative yeah, from Benfica? Well, Rui Costa was there, I believe. Rui Costa uh, was at the Nun Gomes, I think. Yeah, but again, I, I think it's an award won for Benfica, so I think it should have it there that, you know, John Felix, Benfica. I think that's the way uh, uh, Benfica age. Whatever teams that the guys are playing for, I think that they deserve to do credit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't want to be sporting here and celebrate these awards like they do every year with Luis Figo and Cristiano Ronaldo. Uh, but at the same time, it's not to sneeze at. I mean, they're doing a good job in developing yeah. players. Unfortunately, these guys aren't able to stick around a little bit longer after winning these golden balls for whatever it is, the young players. Yeah, the, and, and Benfica, obviously, after uh, João Félix uh, won, uh, Benfica's statement was that they hope to produce more another why not or within the coming years and, and certainly there's a lot of people that look at that with a little bit of a, a of a snotty opinion meaning the one thing they should be concentrating is is the product that you put on the field not these products that you create and then you end up selling off without taking much well, advantage unfortunately of unfortunately for Benfica this is not like horse racing where you pay an astronomical amount for the mating process and you get a Gold, what, what, what is it, golden crown, uh, triple crown winner, and they mate for like 500. If Benfica was able to do that and clone these guys and get them in the little sneaky, sneaky room, it'd be a tremendous way to make money. But unfortunately, it's not as easy as that. Yeah, that's all we got uh, for you this episode. Uh, my name is Alfredo Fumas. And I'm Cristiano Oliveira. This has been uh, Time Added On, a project from the Benfica Independent uh, project, of course. BenficaIndependent.com. At Bific Independent uh, um, on Twitter, uh, I, th I think it's at SL. It's under here. You it's will see it all. Um, Bific Podcast is our podcast. It's what we do. It's what we do. Check that out as well. Appreciate all the support. Check you guys out next week. Take care.